Hello everyone! Welcome to another week of Clip Studio Paint Tutorial! This week we're going to talk about two other huge time-saving features, the collision fill and the colorization. If you have seen the vector tutorial from last week as well as the week before, you would have seen the wall graphic that I created for Wacom in less than two weeks. While the vector line art had contributed a ton of what I was able to make that deadline, the close and fill was another star in that project. If you're a color flatter or you use a lot of flat colors in your illustrations, then this video is for you. And if you just heard color flats and was thinking, what the heck lady, I've known paint buckets since MS Paint. Yes, we're talking about paint bucket. Super ultra edition. Let's start with a little quiz. How would you fill color in this little square? And by square, I totally mean rectangle. I'm, I'm very shape challenged. Easy. You use a paint bucket and you just drop it in the middle. So I hope you will pass that one. Now comes the second question. How do you fill all three of these shapes? And you're like, oh, where is she going with this? You just fill three shapes. And what about now? Well, it's still fairly simple. You can use the wand tool, select the outside, invert the selection, and fill. So what about this one then? What if I want to fill all of these text as well as the bear? I mean, for the text, I can just, you know, click really fast. I have this ninja skill. Super fast. And missed. And for the bear, I can always just lasso tool it. Oh, I'm doing this in real time to, like, prove to you how fast I can be. Oh my god, I missed. Oh no. Darn it. Um, there. Perfect. Great. You passed all that. Now fill these flowers. Oh. I, uh, it's, it's okay. It's a piece of cake. It's, it's, it's fine. I think it's fine. You know what? The two minutes wasn't a big deal, right? Like, that's fine. The Queen of Hearts illustration that I showcased last week during the vector tutorials used the same exact methods that I just demonstrated. The piece itself had a ton of tiny little details, and this was what the color setup looked like. But that was before I discovered Clip Studio Paint. Those days are behind me, guys. In today's tutorial, I'm going to talk about how I moved on from those old methods. First of all, you'll want to look for the paint bucket tool, and then you'll want to search for close and fill. Close and fill is an auto-target feature that fills all areas that you close completely around. With the right setting, you are able to fill the entire area that you lasso around. The setting up the tool initially can be a little bit complicated, so I'll try to simplify it as much as I can. The very first attribute in the tool property panel is target color. Target color refers to which colors are being targeted within your selection. To make this simple and easy to understand, we're actually only going to look at two settings within the drop-down menu. One of them is target all colors, and the other is only white and transparent, which we'll start with. The areas that are white and transparent right now on this layer are the only areas that will be targeted to fill. And as you can see, all of the lines are on the top vector layer. This color layer right now is completely transparent. I'm going to make a selection all the way around this eye area. And when I release it, it's going to fill those enclosed areas that I just made a selection around. Let's say I want to fill the rest of the eye, the rest of the paws, and also this little nose here. I just enclose those areas and quickly fill them in. So because the target color is only white and transparent, even when I'm enclosing around the entire bear, it's not going to override the color in the eyes, nose, and paws because they're not being targeted. Another thing to keep in mind is that you must circle around the entire area that's enclosed. So for example, if I want to fill in deadline, but then the E, I don't circle around the entire shape. It's not going to fill the E, but filling everything else. The second attribute is closed gap. Gaps are a color flatter's biggest enemy because when there are gaps in the line art, it's not considered a closed area. So no matter how much I go around it, only this part is going to be filled because that's a closed area. But as long as you increase the amount that it's willing to close, 
you can feel that no problem. With those things in mind, you can now fill these areas very quickly. Color margin is an interesting one. It controls the range of color that is considered the same color. If I enclose this area right now, supposedly it's not going to override the color because the target color is set to only white and transparent. However, it did. The reason for that is because the color margin right now is set to pretty high. Therefore, a white range of color close to white is all considered to be white. So this yellow has been considered white. It is part of the target color. If I don't want that targeted, all I need to do is lower the color margin. Now it's not going to target that. With those in mind, you can now fill up the rest of the image really quickly. And if you want to change the colors for a particular area, you can just set the target color to target all colors. And now, even if the area has already had color down, it's going to override it. Area scaling decides if it wants to overfill or underfill. To see it clearly, we're going to disable the paper and the reference lines. There is a lot of transparent area still due to the lines being that thick. I'm going to fill another color on another layer so you can compare it a little bit easier. Right now we increase the area scaling to 20 and then we're going to fill this area out again. So you can see the green area is larger than the original color. And that's because the fill area has been increased by 10 pixels. And if we go into minus, minus 20, let's go. It's going to be a smaller fill. Refer multiple is going to take elements from other layers into consideration. This is a must if your line art is on a vector layer because color fill can only be on raster. So right now we have the bare line on one layer, green lines on another, and then the Wacom line on another. All layers mean all of the information across every single layer in your file is going to be used. It will consider the Wacom layer and also the green and black layer combined. Reference layer will only take the layer that is set as a reference layer into consideration. For example, if I only want the information in green line to be considered, I will select that layer and check this icon right here set as reference layer. You can see that in front of the layer, there is a little light box. Now this green line layer has become your reference layer. And now, even if I go over all of the shapes, only those four within the green lines are going to be filled. Selected layer means it's going to take the layers that you have selected into consideration. I think that's pretty straightforward. I don't need to go over everything, right? And the layers and folder can be super useful, especially if you have your line art across a ton of different folders. Now the rest of the beautiful drawing, thank you, I know, are in the bottom folder, but I drew some more really intricate shapes in another folder. If I have layer in folder selected, it's only going to fill the line art in the same folder. The last one is filled up to vector path. If your line art is on a vector layer, which by the way, it should be, having this attribute checked means it will really cleanly fill up to your vector path. See right there, very clean. This also means that the area scaling, even if you increase it, it's not going to go over that line. But if you decrease it, it will decrease but it'll take the path itself into consideration instead of the thickness of the line. I'm tired. I know that was a lot of information. If that was really confusing to you, don't worry. I actually learned this feature through a ton of trials and errors. But my personality is to get to the bottom of things. How come this isn't filling? How come that is filling? And I just tried all the different combinations. And because everybody's layer setup is a little bit different, so it is worth looking into the target color attribute compared to the two that I just showed you. But just like the vector layer, even though it can be a little bit intimidating at first to learn, but once you learn it, it's a huge time saver. All of the process that you're seeing in this clip took me seven minutes in total, compared to spending two minutes on just those flowers. This combined with Wacom's affordable display tablet, Wacom One, really saves my wrist. So after all that explaining, I think you deserve a break. And by you, I really mean me. Well, that's too bad. Before I let you go today, I'm going to show you a little bit more magic. So right now you're probably thinking, oh my gosh, she has officially lost her mind. Maybe I have. The crazy colors are on the raster layer and the line art layer, you will want to make sure that set as reference layer is on 
so that you can see a little lighthouse icon in front of it. And now we're going to go into edit, colorize, use hint image and colorize when you have the raster color selected. There you go. And if we're really being honest here, I really have no idea what happened. This feature is still a mystery to me, but it's oh my god so cool. What's even cooler is that if you have your line art selected and you go into edit, colorize, instead of use hint image, you choose colorize all. It's going to give you a different result. And now if you enable both of them, you can create some really interesting effect. If you go under edit, colorize, use more event settings, you can control the strength and percentage of each color that you placed. And that is the beauty of digital art. The possibilities are so endless. I'm constantly still discovering new palettes, new techniques, and varieties that I can bring back into my traditional art. Uh, in the end, always remember to have fun with your craft. Before we go, next week is super exciting because we're going to be talking about the feature that I get asked the most often. I will give you a hint. And that is all. Thank you guys so much for watching. I am the one with Bear. I'll see you next week.